Good morning, Lord Bishop, and welcome to our General Assembly. We will be delighted if you would speak to us. Thank Please you very much. Uh, dearly beloved in Christ, uh, your graces and um, the moderator of the Church of Scotland. It's a joy and delight to be here. I've had the greatest honor on eight occasions when the discussions between the Church of Scotland and Church of England took place. In 2020, we are going to have it in Bishopthorpe Palace, but COVID intervened. So I still hope that the discussion between those two churches, whose mission is to be a witness of blessing and pilgrimage and prayer, will continue because you as Church of Scotland, you've got a mission to this great nation just as much as the Church of England in England. Change is a word that's buzzing around all over the place. And, um, and the whole question of change, how do we handle it? If you do remember, during her Golden Jubilee, the Queen said, change is a constant. The way we respond to it will determine our future. If you see change as a constant, not as some shock waves that come, then there is a chance. If we react to it properly, we are going to find our future a wonderful one. And I hope it is that vision of Revelation 21, where there is this great view of um, a holy city, a ho new nations, new earth. And by the way, what is interesting, the book of Revelation, in the new world to come, there will be no church. The guy said, I saw no temple in the city because God Almighty has become the reality that we all worship. We all need this virtue of hope. Hope is one of those things that actually makes all of us to shine. And Jim Wallace of the Sojourners has said, hope is believing in spite of the evidence and watching the evidence change. And what gave him a vision to this was Desmond Tutu, after being released from being arrested, goes to his cathedral church in, Johans in, um, in Cape Town, and all around, soldiers surrounding him, and he goes in the pulpit and says, gentlemen, apartheid is ending. Come and join the winning side. And he starts dancing. Come and join the winning side. And that took another nine years, but apartheid did end. So hope is believing is part of the evidence and watching the evidence change. We also are bombarded often by the whole question of equality. And sometimes we don't define it the way we should define it. What is important is for the Christian, it is to know always that everybody standing in front of you is a stand, a stand in for God. They are made in his God image and likeness. And that's what should actually be driving us of who we are in Christ. Which reminds me of a story of a jumbo jet that lost a lot of power as it was going across the Atlantic. And the captain said, ladies and gentlemen, we are losing a lot of power. So we need to get rid of your hand luggage. The crew come around and collect it. When we drop to safe height, they will swing it all out. And they will say, yes, 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 yes. And then he said, by the way, we are still losing a lot of power after 30 minutes. We still need to get rid of 50 people. You put on your love jackets and you'll be dropped into the ocean and you'll be collected. It will be safely done. Uh, and in order to do it, we are going to apply our equal opportunity policy. <laughs> First of all, A, are there any Caribbeans on board? Total silence. B, are there any blacks on board? Total silence. C, are there any coloreds on board? Total silence. And the little boy turned to his father and said, Dad, who are we? And the father said, we are Zulus. Friends, I greet you as a chair of Christian Aid, and I was here two weeks ago, and there is that wonderful thing happening in St. Mary's Church, which ended on Saturday, the book sale, and the mission of Christian Aid is actually that wonderful few words, we believe in life before death, and our new wonderful principles of um, poverty, 
The greatest thing that the Church of Scotland can continue to do is to try and tackle the whole question of poverty. Getting a prophetic voice, that means that actually amplifying the voice of those who are not heard, and then also tackling the whole question of power. Lord Acton said to a very pompous Bishop of London, and then become Archbishop of Canterbury, that power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Christian aid does not want to abrogate power, but want to use it properly. And then one more final thing to say, those wonderful words I want to leave with you from 1 Thessalonians 5.24. He who called you keeps faith, and he will do it. Remember you as a church in 1910, a mission to the world was started here, and a lot of churches got into it. And 100 years later, I was back here to thank all of you who took part in it. So, the harvest is ripe. And you, as a national church, have the greatest delight to make Jesus Christ visible and known in many different places, tackling poverty, tackling those who may be actually be vulnerable and excluded, always rejoicing that he who called you is faithful and he will do it. Believe it, practice it, live it, and you'll be surprised with what he can do. Thank you very much. Can I thank you for volunteering uh, <laughs> to come and speak to us, but for inspiring us as well by what you've said. Um, a good man or a good woman never retires. You had such a, a powerful ministry, and now you're the chair of Christian Aid uh, and leading a, a wonderful organization uh, with that uh, faith and charisma that is yours uniquely. And so we're just so glad to know that uh, that's in good hands, that you're still among us, that you're still working for God's kingdom and doing so much good. So God bless you in all of your endeavors, sir. God bless you. Thank you.